friends, uh, Margie here. Thought I would share with you a little snow day, midday, cold day practice. So we'll take maybe 15, 20 minutes. Uh, come as you are. <laughs> and I hope that you are in general prepared for relatively easy movement. If you're not, if you just happen to have, you know, just come in from a black tie fair and you're corset it up or something loosen any tightness in your clothing and i'll meet you on the mat uh you may i hope you have your mat laid out or a practice space relatively accessible um this is one of those kind of pro tips or hacks for practice is ideally you have a space that you can leave somewhat yoga friendly. So of course, I know not everybody has a well stacked, stocked prop closet, but you know, a mat that you don't mind that the dog walks on, a cushion or a couple of blankets. So this is my shoulder stand set up. I'm not gonna do that today or with you, I don't think. So I'm just gonna move some that away put my warm beverage aside. I am going to take my socks off because I'm going to be doing some standing postures and it helps to be able to both feel the soles of the feet and to take advantage of the grip of the mat. If you have socks on, that's okay, uh, but it's, it's going to be a little bit harder. So if you're looking for a way to make it a little bit easier, Try with your socks off. I have lots of layers on, so I'm warm here. And I really would encourage you to start layered so that you are warm. If standing has been kind of sketchy, move your mat over to a wall or bring a chair or, you know, position your mat near a piece of furniture so you can hang on to something. There's no need to be kind of flailing around in the middle of the room. I want you to feel very confident about your ability to be steady in your pose. So notice even as I said that I step my feet a little wider apart and make a little broader base to stack my bones upon and I feel a little steadier. Now, if you're on the air train at the airport or on skis or on a boat, think about how you maintain your steadiness while you're also being moved. You're not generating the movement, but you're being moved by forces. We do that by bending our knees, right? So if you would, with your feet just as wide apart as you need to feel steady, with your body positioned, you know, close to something that feels solid and supportive, if you'd like. And then with your knees bent, just let yourself start to move. Bounce. You might imagine being on a boat and swaying or being on a train and kind of bumping. And as you do this and shift your weight from one side to the other, Maybe you start to roll around from the fronts of your feet to the back and you get to kind of that tipping point where maybe you do, you know, lurch forward and step forward or lurch backward. Let yourself start to make those little mistakes, not mistakes, but find out where those edges are and how you move. So we gain a lot of confidence with yoga practice. Because not only are we able to maintain our steadiness, but we're also familiar with falling. <laughs> so do a little bit of that. Fall to the left, fall to the right, fall forward, fall backward. I had my first day on a snowboard yesterday of the season, and I did a full somersault. It was wonderful. <laughs> I was a little alarmed at first. I thought, oh, I'm fine. So let your body, whether it be fluid, like on a boat, or a little bit more bouncy, like maybe on a train, be moved around 
And as you do that, you probably also maybe are getting a little bit of feedback about where things are a little tender, I got a little neck and a little ankle kind of thing. Let's do one more minute. You might add a little bit more movement into your arms and hands. I'm opting for the bounce and the shake today. You might be doing more of the sway. Let's make sure breath is here with us. Two for five, four, three, two, one, and then let's be still. Stomp each foot into the floor. Reach your arms down, spread your fingers out. Turn your palms to face forward and draw your shoulders just slightly back. So there's broadness across the front of the chest and the upper back is awake. You might close your eyes. Feel your heartbeat. As you exhale, feel what we call apana, a downward moving energy. In particular, feel it if you can, moving your shoulders down your back and let your hands continue to reach away from the shoulders. In this case, at first down towards the floor. And then with the next inhalation, keep the tops of the shoulders moving down, but lift the elbows up. Keep the arms and fingers extended. When you get to about shoulder height, that might be the limit for some, you might bend your elbows and see if that gives you a little more steadiness. You might keep them straight. You might pivot the palms to face upward. Keep broad across the chest and breathe again. Maybe you go a little higher, maybe you don't. Let your breath dictate your movement. Come all the way up to the top of your inhalation. Glance upward. Inhale again. Bring your palms towards your heart. And relax your arms down. Good. Let's bring the hands onto the hips. Find again that little bouncy possibility in the legs steady but able to withstand some movement and then we're going to pick up the toes and keep the heels grounded and pivot the toes away from the midline with the little knee bend back to the midline away and back and away and back you may be bending your knees more or less depending on your body your flexibility, more of a bend in the knees is not necessarily beneficial. So especially if it doesn't feel good, I wouldn't recommend that. And in fact, you might even be relatively straight legged, just practicing this internal, external rotation a few more times. Next time you go out, pause, have a look down See if the feet are roughly at the same angle. If one is much more turned out than the other, see if you can inch it back. So say you're roughly at 10 and two, if you are imagining the face of a clock or 11 and one. And then have a look to at your toes and the arches of the feet where you might be able to see and see if you can stretch all 10 toes out and then lift them up and see if you can then also see some lift in the arches of the feet. Maybe you even like I do feel some lift come all the way up the knees and into the groins. Keep that sense of lift. This is a muscle supporting the alignment of the bones and the legs. You may either keep your toes lifted or set them back down. Anytime you're not sure you've got that engagement in the legs, you can lift the toes again. And then we'll bend the knees, opening the thighs so that the knees track right over the toes. If you glance down, you should be able to see at least your big toe, maybe big second and third toe. And then we come back up. Now you can take your feet wider apart 
if that accommodates the length of your legs a little better. The action here is not so much the depth of the bend, but the integrity of the hips controlling the angle of the legs. So I feel a little heat in the outside of the hips and I feel a little stretch, big stretch, <laughs> the inside of the hips, the insides of the thighs. So a few more times, you can go more quickly or more slowly than I am. You can go deeper or stay a little more shallow than I am. We're looking for just the right amount of intensity so that you're in your hips, but not overwhelmed. Good, maybe let's stay here in the flexed position with the knees still open. Lift one heel and then the other. One heel and then the other. One heel and then the other. Maybe both heels. Again, you can be using your furniture or your wall to help. Let's bring five full breaths. Four, three, whoa, two, one. And then set the heels down, straighten the legs, pivot the toes towards the short side of the mat, and make sure you're still good and steady here. You can always take the front foot out towards the edge of the mat to help it be more like you're on railroad tracks than on a tightrope. And we're going to, again, look for the lift of the arches of the feet, lift all the way up to the pelvis, and then the pelvis turns towards the front leg, up and down a couple of times. The back hip can pop out a little bit, anchor into the little toe side of the back foot. Two, three, Good, let's use the front hand to help anchor the front thigh. Let the back arm be free and give it a swing around. If your shoulder doesn't like this much movement, your arm can be relaxed and you can just be shrugging your shoulder. One or two more times. And then use the strength of this top arm to pull you back up. Bring your hands to your hips, swivel all the way around. So toes face the other side. Again, make sure you're stable. Lift the arches, lift the hips. Tip your pelvis over your front leg. Maintain as well as you're able the balance in your feet. You know, imagine doing this on a boat or on a train and how might you withstand a little bounce or a little movement and stay steady. That's what we want, right? These postures are not, you know, put up on shelves. We live in this body in a dynamic world. Front hand can ground the front thigh. Back arm can help to free and open the chest, the breath, maybe some of the spirit. That arm can be either relaxed or active. You and your shoulder decide. Good, and then let this arm get more active and lift you back up. Come back to center. Let's have the toes now mostly forward facing, the thighs pushing back, the pelvis coming over the tops of the legs. Keep your tail up in the air. You can bend your knees if you need to get your tail out from between your legs. And then hands can either come down to the floor if they reach without causing you to round your back or blocks or your furniture or a wall out in front of you. Good, get your sea legs back on, your snow legs back on. Find a little bounce. A lot of us had a lot of te tension and strength in the back of our body. So being able to show our system lots of pathways for moving some of that energy can be really helpful, really beneficial. 
Good, you decide from here if the heart and the head go a little lower. You can even sit back into a chair to do this wide-legged forward fold, or you can stand if that feels good. Hips high, head and heart low. And then let's do, start to bring the hips down low again. Now, if you've already found that deep flexion is problematic for your knees, I want you to keep working on your hips, but in a way that doesn't stress your knees. So this would be a better posture for some of you to do reclining with your knees pulled in towards your chest, your feet up towards the ceiling, or you could also try doing it if you want a little more feedback with feet on the wall and hips scooting close. If you're able to stay on your feet, keep the toes lifted, keep the arches lifted, and bring the hips down, you might take the standing version of the wide-legged squat. One or two more breaths here. And then again, either reclining or upright will take the knees from wide as they are now to not only narrow, but crossing over the midline. So if your knees are tolerating the flexion, you can start on hands and knees, bring the left knee forward and then cross it over the right. Take the heels wide to make room between them for the hips and then start to draw the hips back. Good, this can also be done reclining one thigh over the other, heels wide, and then knees together. Good, a little wiggle. Again, imagine on a boat or on the snow. It gives that tension, energy, some place to go. Switch the cross of your legs. You can do the kick and switch like I just did, or come back to your hands and knees and bring the opposite knee forward, cross it over. <laughs> Give a little wiggle wiggle. Hmm. All right. So much of our action, uh, sports, movements, even in action, so much of our sedentary time is spent with our legs you know, right in front of us and thighs relatively close to the body. So in this practice, we took the thighs wider and we turned the body side to side. One more thing that we can do to help to encourage the flexibility and strength of the hips and the legs and the back is to stretch or extend the fronts of the legs, the front of the pelvis, and the front of the belly. You can do this actively or passively. Either way, you'll start lying on your back, knees bent, feet on the floor. For a passive version, you'll want to have a block or a cushion, something relatively firm, could be a folded blanket, that you'll slide underneath your hips. Good, for the active version, we'll also lift the hips as if we're going to slide something underneath, but instead of sliding something to hold us up, we'll engage the back body, the hamstrings moving the thighs up, the glutes moving the hips up, the paraspinal muscles lifting the spine and the belly, the rhomboids and the muscles behind the shoulders lifting the heart up. Good, you might be pulsing up and down a couple of times, especially if this is a newer movement for you, a newer position for you. Or you might stay for several breaths. And you'll find your steadiness. Okay, 
release your hips down. After several breaths, stretch your arms out. Move your feet a little wider apart and then let your knees just gently move from one side of the midline to the other. Okay, just like that, a little dose of movement to help your hips continue to be able to stay steady and enjoy the flow of life as it moves around you. See you out there.